वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला मै नेम इज आशा कोठारी चौधरी एंड आई एम प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश एट गुवाहाटी यूनिवर्सिटी द कोर्स वी आर डूइंग इज इंडियन राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश एंड द मॉड्यूल दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट नाउ इज ऑन महात्मा गांधी इज ऑटोबायोग्राफी द स्टोरी ऑफ माई एक्सपेरिमेंट्स विथ ट्रूथ लेट इज फर्स्ट नो सर्टन फैक्ट्स दैट वी many of us are already familiar with born on 2nd october 1869 in porbandar gujarat into a hindu family mahatma gandhi received teachings of non violence tolerance and vegetarianism since his childhood the name mahatma becomes attached to gandhi through the intervention of rabindranath tagore who addressed him to be a man possessing a great soul the life of gandhi as well as his ideas and his work is often taken to have a fundamental kind of significance for those who believe in ideals of humanities and ethical living mahatma gandhi happens to also have a very prolific corpus of writing it is voluminous in the sense that his autobiography is also a very large work and when we are looking at something like the collected works of mahatma gandhi it consists actually of a hundred volumes which includes more than 50000 pages of text that is a very large output in terms of any writer and much of his work assumes the form of the essay or the letter in other words they are life writing he does not of course write any fiction mahatma gandhi's autobiographical writer a writing such as his letters help us to understand his mind his strategies his political strategies his openness and honesty his philosophies that keep him grounded and there is this element of revealing or revealing the self as it were but one must note that though his works are not steadfastly political when compared to the writings of leaders such as lenin or mao his two basic principles of swaraj and satyagraha permeate throughout his writings gandhi understood the impact or the import that his published printed words would have in terms of the nationalistic fervor that was consistently picking up tempo during his tenure at the helm of the Indian National Congress and therefore he began to in right earnest edit numbers of journals and undertook all sorts of writing to to propagate what he in so many ways uh, completely had to keep uh his reading public enthralled by and hooked to if he may uh ah that goes wound okay i am going to say that again now gandhi understood the import that his words his printed words would have on the masses of uh of an india that was struggling for independence at that particular time and since he is also at the helm of that struggle for independence what he writes and what he publishes through newspapers through journals through um, letters uh, his autobiographies his whatever life writing all of them please mind you are life writing genres all of his works he understands will have a specific political impact in the national context in the context of the national freedom movement and therefore he makes it a point to edit his journals and keep his focus on his goal of independence in terms of many of his writings he contributes uh, to the periodical indian opinion this is the first instance of his work which appears in print and a journal that he edited 
in South Africa. This perhaps is the beginning of his journey in terms of life writing. In India, we have three journals that are known for its uh, intricate relationship with Gandhi, his work and his life. And they are Young India, Navjeevan and Harijan, all three of which were edited by Mahatma Gandhi. His writings also include a number of books, many interviews, voluminous numbers of letters and a huge collection of articles that were published later in journals. All throughout his life, while he is engaging in thinking and acting and leading, he is also seen to be simultaneously writing. In some sense, one would have to understand that Western education must have had something to do with this. The fact that he did go abroad, he went to the UK to get his uh, law, law degree. The fact that he exposes himself to the West and its conception of, uh, of political strategies, its tendency to constantly record everything must have had something uh, uh, to contribute to how Gandhi himself begins to take up uh, the notion of writing and impacting through publication uh, the large scale uh, public uh, that he was able to communicate with. So in that sense, so much of the national struggle uh, that he leads is dispersed and, 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 and the reading public is stimulated by ideas that are coming straight from uh, this leader uh, to, uh, the, uh, to them uh, through the means of essays, letters, journals and so on. An important piece of work by Mahatma Gandhi, which is written in 1909, is Hind Swaraj, Indian Home Rule, as it, it can be translated, which is actually a critique of colonialism and Western civilization. Uh, this is exactly what I was referring to when I was speaking about stratagems that he evolves to keep the British out or to ask them to leave. The story of my experiments with truth by Mahatma Gandhi, of course, is his most well-known book or his most well-known work, his autobiography, which he wrote originally in Gujarati, as we have already mentioned. It was published weekly in the journal Navjeevan from 1925 to 1929. That is a span of uh, four years and it was translated into English by his manager Mahadev Desai. And it is only when the translation in English comes that it is available as a single volume. So the period of Gandhi's life till the year 1920 is recorded in this particular um, story of my experiments with truth. And the translated version is published uh, in another journal in Young India. It seems he attempts to make uh, use of the Western autobiographical framework to blend scientific study and religion as principles which enabled him to seek truth through myriad ways. That is what gives his autobiography the Indian touch. With all the trials and tribulations while experimenting with truth, leading to self-realization of some sort. Furthermore, we we find that he he chooses to form the autobiography as he strives to render quote unquote practical applications of the principles, rather than confining only uh, uh, confining himself only to the academic principles of the autobiography. The book also reflects his inner struggle to emerge as a person who has been largely instrumental in India's struggle for freedom and subsequently leading the country in terms of its march to independence. 
Gandhi in his autobiography makes its moral purpose overt. As in it, rather than merely being self-indulgent, he tells us about his moral and spiritual journey all throughout till the time when he was actually associated with the freedom struggle of India. In this sense, the underlying ethics of understanding himself and later inscribing his own past uh, at many levels uh, comes across as ironic. He is deliberately ironic about his experiments at various parts uh, of his autobiography. The autobiography itself can be roughly divided into a few parts corresponding to the different periods in his life which held particular significance in terms of his drying out with principles of truth. His childhood, the time he spent in London, the period he began his activism in South Africa, the transformation from Mohandas to Mahatma, and finally the rest trials um, associated with the pursuit of truth. And his deep faith in God remains consistently present throughout the work. Now Gandhi is probably thought to be a, an extremely shy, an extremely thoughtful child who would almost always question himself about right or wrong, about uh, every time he has this tendency to falter uh, he would somehow succeed in coming back to the right path. Uh, there are instances in the autobiography where he refers to his experimentation with smoking, to buying cigarettes for which he had to steal money from a servant. And then later when he realizes that this was really a mistake, he in an act of repentance writes a confession note to his father and seeks to be punished. Now the seed of non-violence sowed in him by his father in, in his very young age seems to have changed Gandhi's uh, way of looking at life altogether. Regarding religion, Gandhi narrates that he was not exposed to religion by his teachers till the age of 16. And it was at, uh, at the instance of his nurse Rambha who taught him to repeat uh, Ramanama whenever he had any fear in his mind. He remembers reading two plays during that period which left an indelible mind in his young heart. These plays were about Shravan, Kumar and Harish Chandra. The character of Shravan enhanced his keenness to serve his parents and Harish Chandra made him wonder why everyone cannot practice the virtue of truthfulness. Gandhi in his autobiography talks about his child marriage at the age of 13. The aspect which he thinks necessary to present himself in terms of his experiments with truth. However, as a child, Gandhi seems to be very attracted by childish pranks and as he says, he enjoyed his marriage ceremony not because of anything else but because of its festivities. In the chapter, Playing the Husband, Gandhi confesses about the restriction he had imposed on his wife, Kasturbai. It was imprinted in his mind that he had to be faithful to his wife all throughout his life and in return, he too expected the same. The next phase of his life is spent in London for his education and marks his resistance towards avoiding non-vegetarian food, towards alcohol or the company of other women and things that he promised his mother that he would not indulge in before he left for England. He finds that he has to starve most of the time as he was not able to access proper vegetarian food in London. He joins the Vegetarian Society in London and then begins to contribute several articles in the weekly journal, which is called The Vegetarian. And now 
though Gandhi tries to fit himself into the elite society of the British, he could not really adapt himself to the manners of the British society, even after putting in a lot of effort. Much of this is recorded in his autobiography uh, with a great deal of underlying humor and self-deprecating -de humor at that. At that period, he begins to read extensively about laws and the politics of Europe, about vegetarianism, religious books such as the English translation of the Gita, the Bible, and uh, Key to Theosophy by Blavatsky, and The Light of Asia by Edwin Arnold. Around the year 1893, Gandhi's sailing to South Africa became a defining juncture of his life. The incident of throwing him out of the train that is very well known by most Indians during this journey in South Africa for refusing to get out of his first class coach and together with a couple of similar such incidences or other kinds of discrimination made him sit up and fight against this injustice meted out towards colored people in this country. During his 21 years in the country, he got involved with various agitations and campaigns to help the Indian population that resided in South Africa. In course of time, the Natal Indian Congress was formed to carry on with the per persistent protest against all kinds of injustice imposed upon the Indians living here. Simultaneously with his activism, Gandhi carried on his legal practice and soon established himself as a successful lawyer. And in the year 1886, he encountered a mob attack by the whites while returning from India. You have here a, a, a mob that is furious by the rumor that is being spread in South Africa that Gandhi had condemned the whites in India and also that he was bringing a lot of Indians with him to inundate uh, this land. But what he wanted most of all is to be of some help to his fellow men. During the Boer War, Gandhi decided to offer his services by taking care of the ailing and injured soldiers. The efforts of the Indians involved in the mission was recognized and they worked with ardent zeal which brought them both praise and awards. In the year 1901, Gandhi decided to return to India and began to travel extensively throughout the country to carry out work in association with his mentor, Gopal Krishna Gokhale. The Phoenix Settlement in 1904 is another landmark in Gandhi's political movement. This was an ashram, a commune, that reflected the ideals of equality. All the people who lived here and worked together worked irrespective of caste, creed, ethnicity, and the work too was divided indiscriminately. In the morning and evening prayers of the ashram, Gandhi would make them proclaim the vows of non-violence, non-possession, truth, tolerance, brahmacharya, and so on. Gandhi himself began to practice celibacy, which entailed a lot of control over both mind and body. He begins now to sustain himself with the bare minimum of everything as he considered sacrifice as the very law of life. During the Zulu rebellion in Africa, Gandhi and his group nursed back the Zulus who were inhumanly tortured by the whites. The first Satyagraha movement under the leadership of Gandhi began in the year 1906. It was directed against an ordinance by white government in the state of Transvaal, which required the Indians to register themselves, a strategy to weaken the civil rights movements of the Asian community. For the first time, Gandhi was imprisoned and held during this period. The Tolstoy farm was now established for the, for the Satyagrahis after Gandhi discontinued with his professional practice. 
we can say then that South Africa prepared Gandhi for the massive battle he had to come back to in India. Gandhi returned to India in January 1915, as many of us know. He soon got himself completely involved with the social and political life of the country after establishing the first ashram in Gujarat. Gandhi began the civil disobedience movement during this period. The whole nation came together as a unified force against the British on 30th March 1990. Gandhi went to Punjab for the annual session of the Indian National Congress in December 1919 and was made the chairman of the committee appointed for the reconsideration of the Constitution of Congress. Hence, one's reading of Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography cannot be merely taken as a life story of an extraordinary leader, as it is he who brought the country independence with his non-violent strategies, his principles and beliefs in the strength of truth. Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography thus becomes a testimony of his journey from being an ordinary man to becoming the Mahatma. When we are looking at the uh, autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi, in summation, one has to recall certain specific facts. Number one, that India until Gandhi's autobiography perhaps was not even aware of this genre called the autobiography, where you begin to record things for public dispersal personal things that will be made public. It happens to be a Western genre. There have been instances of autobiography writing before Mahatma Gandhi's book, but then it is, it is this book perhaps that is the benchmark that in so many ways is, is the life writing genre culmination uh, of almost a whole century of what had gone before from uh, the 18th century onwards when autobiography, writing, epistolatory forms and all of these other life writing forms had entered into India. It is perhaps now that this form has come of age. Later on we will find that Nehru's writings as well uh, take this form one step further. But let us now also consider what this autobiography meant uh, in the public sphere. Here was a man who very quickly begins to become the figurehead, uh, the face of the Indian national movement. He begins to write the story of his life. And it is written in a particular confessional tone. It resounds with self-deprecating humor. It reveals uh, to the public little known facets, foibles of a child growing up uh, from being uh, someone who is aping the British, trying to learn British manners and mannerisms and uh, the violin and elocution and so on and so forth to becoming one of the greatest world leaders of all time. Uh, the journey itself is being revealed and that is what gives this particular uh, autobiography the power that it actually has uh, in the sense that uh, the entire world has had access to the strategizing, the, the ethical strategizing that he has uh, evolved in order to achieve the goals that he set for his country's freedom. Thank you.